Hi friends, how are you guys doing? And welcome to... Crimes with Cole. So hello, hello, hello. How are you guys today? I hope you guys are doing great. I hope you guys had an amazing weekend and are ready for a case that's just all too common and yet the things we do for the things we want in life. Hmm. <laughs> You'll see what I mean in today's case. In today's case, we will be talking about once again another tainted relationship that ended badly. Monica had stabbed her ex-husband but yet refused to leave because of the lifestyle he provided. Was his controlling behavior worth the sentence she got? Maybe. Today, we will be talking about Monica Fairview and Rob Kramer. Monica Fairview was a beautiful young woman that had recently been divorced. She was in the middle of a nasty custody battle when she had met Rob. Rob Kramer was a wealthy man with a little bit of a richer personality. The two of them fell quickly in love and married in December of 1998. A year later, the couple welcomed their baby girl. The relationship soon went south when Rob started becoming verbally abusive. Over the years, the verbal abuse led to some physical altercations. But the couple would wake up in the morning and decide that neither of them wanted to throw the towel in. Monica didn't want to give up her luxurious lifestyle and spending habits. And Rob simply just didn't want to give up Monica. He loved her and he wanted to be with her. One Saturday afternoon in 2005, the couple were having a cookout at their house and I had invited the neighbors along the street. It wasn't long before Rob's drinking became excessive again, and Monica felt the need to comment on it, making everyone at the couple's home feel uncomfortable. The couple started fighting, screaming at one another. Monica was mad Rob was drinking, and Rob was mad about everything that had to do with Monica at this point. But there were much, much deeper issues than just drinking and nagging. You know, and I think we all know a couple like that. It's not like they um, wait to fight in private. You know, like, oh, I'm upset with you, so we're going to discuss the matter. Or you can fight, whatever. In private, when we get home, it's, oh, you're making me mad, so I'm going to let everybody know our dirty laundry and why you have made me upset. Like, just that. And I feel like we've all been there where we've had to experience that, and it's like, mm, it's just weird. It's a weird, awkward feeling sometimes. But, you know, and that's what was happening. Now, Monica's brother had came to stay with the couple in this, you know, ginormous, luxurious home that they owned, and he would say that Rob was always verbally abusive to Monica. So, one could imagine the resentment being built up. I'm sure Monica certainly uh, got fed up with it and started lashing out and it's instances like the cookout where you're like I've had it you know I'm to my limit and he does something stupid and then you just comment back the couple ultimately ended up separating but kept in contact because they had their daughter but according to Monica Rob just couldn't let go of her he wanted to be with her no matter what. He went as far as to show up while she was on vacation once in July of 2009. Oh, that's kind of creepy. But, but, let me say this real quick. I wonder what her responses back to him were like, right? 
Or was he really that crazy that he would just pop up? Or was she enabling that? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. But two years after that, in 2011, Monica had temporarily moved in with Rob in his new place after breaking up with her then boyfriend. Hmm. Yes. Even though the two were not a couple themselves, they weren't getting back together, Rob was just helping Monica out. Now, Monica had decided that she was going to go to a concert with her brother on the night of September 24th, 2011. She told Rob she would just go ahead and take their daughter with her and her brother to this concert. Their daughter was now 11 years old. Rob came home to find his daughter sitting on the couch. So you can only imagine how mad he was. I think any parent would be upset if the other parent told them, oh, hey, I'm going to take our kids somewhere. And then to come home and find them sitting on the couch, you know, why aren't you with your mom? Monica had blatantly lied to him. After all he had done for her, and she had the audacity to sit there and lie to him at the expense of their daughter, right? Because I'm sure the daughter's feelings might have been hurt too, unless, unless the daughter never knew she was going to go to a concert and it was just a lie, period. Like the daughter never knew. And at that time, Rob made up his mind. He was going to kick Monica out. That was the straw that broke the camel's back, and he was done. So he called Monica up, and he left her a message. Now, Monica had returned home just as angry as Rob, and she was standing her ground. She was not backing down. She was ready to put up a fight. She had grabbed a hunting knife and kept it on, like, her waistband, and just kept it on her all night long, according to her daughter. Now, in the early hours of that next morning, right, like, 2, 3, 4 a.m. type of hours, Monica and Rob were in the courtyard arguing. All of the neighbors could hear. They, I mean, they were woken from their sleep. It was so loud. You know, he was overreacting and controlling, according to Monica, and she was ungrateful and needed to leave, according to Rob. So Monica took something and hit Rob upside the head, causing him to start bleeding. And then she left the courtyard, only to return shortly after to, you know, stab him one time with that hunting knife that she had been carrying on her waistband. Rob was rushed to the hospital and he ended up surviving and Monica was arrested for assault. Now, when Rob got out of the hospital, he was quick to want to fix things with Monica. He knew she didn't mean it and was just overly apologetic to her about the entire situation. But, you know, once again, the relationship fell apart. And after that point, Rob must have got his senses about him because he ended up testifying against Monica. A jury found her guilty of assault and she was sentenced to eight years. Not too long, but, you know, long enough to learn a lesson. She had got out and moved and became a real estate broker. Now, it's not really clear what Rob did, um, if he just continued on doing what he was already doing, but the two of them did not get back together. Now, I personally feel this type of relationship is all way too common. You have this beautiful woman who wants this fancy lifestyle, And they get it at whatever cost. They don't care that their husbands are mean or belittling to them as long as they can have, you know, the fancy Porsche to drive or the designer bags or clothes or shoes, you know, whatever, right? The big house, just the status. Not saying that was Monica's intentions from the beginning, 
but why would you stay that long and expose your child or children to all that toxicity? It's unhealthy. But what do you guys think? I mean, would you stay in a toxic relationship that long for the lifestyle? You know, at what cost do you decide that you're like, I'm done. I'm done. I don't care about the beautiful five-bedroom home, the fancy cars, the luxurious trips, the five-star restaurant meal, dinner, dates, whatever, the nice clothes. Like, I don't care about it anymore. At what point do you draw the line and say, I'm done? Some women don't. Some women don't. And in my opinion, that's scary for their kids because then their kids grow up thinking that that is okay and normal to be unhealthy like that. Mm. Mm. But you have to let me know what you guys think. You think that she's just going to get out, find herself another man, do the same thing? I don't know. Maybe Rob just brought out a bad side in her. Maybe she'll find someone else who brings out the good. You'll have to let me know what you guys think. And until next time, please remember to be safe. And I will see you then. Bye.